Conjoint analysis is one of the most widely tool used in uh, marketing research, and um, and of course it's one of the components in in Genius. If if you'd like to learn more about a specific model in in the toolbox, the easiest way is to go to Tutorial and then select uh, the model you are interested in. It will give you access to uh, example data sets. Uh, and it will also give you access to a full tutorial in PDF format that you can download and, and read about and, and you have all the explanations about the different options and, and how to set up your own analysis and how to run analysis and uh, what the, the different things you can do with the, with the model. So in conjoint analysis, the two most important components are what we call the conjoint design and the preference part worth. So basically in conjoint analysis the story goes as follows. We we would all like to have the cheapest product and we would all like to have the product with the highest quality. However, when we have to choose between price and quality, we all differ. And so these trade-offs are what's really interesting when you are designing new products or pricing products or thinking about product portfolio and uh, customer preferences and so on. So what we do in Conjoint is to describe products by a set of attributes. Here we are describing different uh, depar department stores in terms of location, kind of office supplies, uh, whether or not you find office furniture. Think about um, Office Max kind of uh, store and whether or not you can find computers. So these are the attributes and these are the levels available for each of those attributes. So for the furniture attribute, maybe the store is selling some, uh, maybe not. And these are the options, uh, the levels between which customers have to choose. And so maybe for some customers, location is much more important than assortment, maybe not for others. So the key here is that these trade-offs will be quantified in what we call preference part worth. Uh, and that's each value here measures how important to each respondent, each respondent has its own line, uh, how important is each attribute and attribute level uh, to understand what kind of preferences customers have and what kind of choices they will um, eventually make. So for instance, for customer one, uh, having access to office furniture in the store is hugely important, while for customer two, uh, it doesn't matter um, at all. Okay, and, and these values over here are the keys to run simulations, to uh, predict market shares, to optimize pricing and so on. However, these values here are really abstract. And conjoint analysis is a very complex piece of software and very complex approach. I mean, if you launch a conjoint analysis, just looking at the sheer number of options can be, um, can be quite surprising uh, for, um, for uh, students. So what I like to do in class is to actually run a conjoint study from scratch with students in only a few minutes. And it kind of demystify uh, what's happening and, and how we can get to, uh, to these values here. And once students uh, understand how these values are computed and, and the process to get to those values, then we can go into simulation, price optimization, segmentation of customers and so on. So I'm going to run a conjoint study from scratch with you from beginning to end and um, showcase you exactly what I'm going through in the classroom uh, to explain what conjoint analysis is all about and how it works. So I'm starting from scratch and when you start from scratch uh, in Ingenious, one uh, nice feature is the ability to use templates. So templates will guide you through what kind of data you need and, and how the data needs to be encoded. Now, conjoint analysis in itself is a quite complex process, and so it involves two steps. You have to go through the first step, 
uh, enters the attributes and attribute levels and once it's done then you collect data and you estimate uh, preference part worth. So the first step is to design the conjoint uh, study itself and you have to settle on a number of attributes and the maximum number of levels you uh, you choose. Usually I take something extremely simple to, ex to, to explain and to understand it to a, a topic to which all students can relate. So let's say we are going to talk about um, you know sodas, Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, and so on. I'm going to include three attributes, um, and I'm going to include um, up to three levels. Okay, so I'm creating a template. The very first step of the template would be very light. Uh, you just need to enter which attributes are we talking about and which levels for each of these attributes. So let's say I'm, and of course in, in the classroom I go through a discussion what kind of, um, what kind of attributes should be included in, in the study. Uh, so, so for instance, invariably every time students will say, oh, maybe taste. And I would say, okay, how would you describe the taste of a Coke to a customer? And obviously it's very hard to do. So we settle on brand and so on and so forth. So the, the attributes I, I usually use are brand, um, sugar, and price. And then once you've settled on those um, attributes, you have to specify which levels will be included in the study design. So let's make it simple. Let's say Coke, Pepsi, and Sprite. For sugar, you have regular and diet. And for price, let's say 70 cents, uh, $1, $2. So these are the attributes and attribute levels I'd like to understand, um, measure the trade-offs people are willing to make. So how much more are you willing to pay for Diet Coke? Or how much more are you willing to pay for a Pepsi? Or would you rather have a Diet Coke or a regular Pepsi knowing that you prefer Pepsi and Diet but that option is not available? So you have to make a choice between two suboptimal options. So what I do here is usually I ask one student in the classroom to be my uh, guinea pig and to answer a survey. That survey will be designed by the software engineers again uh, automatically. So you go to the template, conjoint analysis, and that's the second step of the uh, analysis, right? So I'm going to use the conjoint design I just created here and I'm going to ask for product ratings, meaning that I'm going to, well, the software is going to create a bunch of fake products and students are going to rate them. And from these ratings, we'll estimate what kind of trade-offs they make between brands and sugar uh, and price and so on. I'm not going to fill with random data. I don't want to contaminate my survey in any way. Um, and once you run that second template, you will have uh, the same conjoint design saved for uh, the analysis, but also a bunch of products that have been generated uh, to be rated, uh, and these ratings will therefore be used to estimate uh, preference part worth. So I go to the classroom, I go to my uh, volunteer, and I, I tell her or him, okay, so, Imagine you have to rate each of these products on a scale from 0 to 100. What score would you give to a regular Pepsi at 80 cents? And that person would say, okay, it's pretty good. I, you know, I like Pepsi, it's cheap, I'd rather have diet, but uh, I'll give it an 80. And then what about a regular Sprite at 70 cents? Um, much less enjoyable, I'm going to put uh, maybe 30. And then I keep going uh, and uh, I have the entire survey filled out in the classroom in real time by one student. So I've just filled out the survey and one thing I ask students, uh, the student at the end, is do you want to review the scores you gave uh, and change them? Because sometimes you begin with a specific scale in mind and by the end of the survey um, they, they changed the way they read products. Now, P 
people will quickly realize it's a really boring survey. And pretty much all conjoint surveys are boring. So it's a nice introduction to say, look, we are just talking about three brands and, and a handful of uh, three attributes and a handful of attribute levels. Think about eight attributes and ten levels. Obviously, we need more advanced methods to get to estimate preference part worth, and it's a very good introduction to the more advanced methods we have available uh, in conjoint analysis. But that one is a good introduction. Now, of course, these values here have no purpose in and by themselves. It's only a way to achieve. Uh, the estimation of how important is price, how important is sugar, and so on. Um, before I run conjoint analysis and I transform these values into preference part worth, I will usually ask the student who answered the survey, so do you think you are price sensitive? Do you really care about diet soda or not? And having that piece of information is usually interesting because it, it allows you to make a difference between stated preferences, uh, what they think they like, and what they actually like and say, uh, and prefer and rate. So you run conjoint analysis. Now one of the great things about templates is that because you've used the template uh, to generate uh, the forms and, and, um, and the dashboard, uh, the software knows exactly which options need to be selected and how. So I'm going to uh, Again, you specify that the conjoint design is specified here, and we have ratings for just one respondent. We could have many more uh, from, uh, from there. So let me generate uh, a PowerPoint report with the results of that uh, individual. It will be very light. We're not going to run simulations. We're not going to predict market shares. We can do that, but I usually do that with uh, more advanced case studies that are available from the list over here uh, in, in Genius, and that's usually an assignment, but here it's only to show uh, the value of conjoint analysis and how we go from ratings to actual uh, preference uh, part worth. So I got the estimation part of conjoint analysis uh, running. In this case, I've asked to generate a PowerPoint file, uh, which we have here. And uh, the, now, of course, the, uh, the, the report is pretty small here because we just have one respondent and we don't have, uh, we don't have any simulations, we don't have uh, competitors, we don't have market share predictions. Um, but if you look at that, which is, of course, what it interests me, uh, preference part worth, that's interesting in it by itself. So if you look at that, uh, and you have the values over here. Uh, my preferences are pretty much spaced out between price and, and diet and so on. So for instance, I'm almost indifferent between 70 cents and $1. Uh, the difference doesn't matter that much to me. It explains barely 10% of my preferences. However, as soon as it goes to $2, I'm becoming much more price sensitive, which makes sense, right? The, the lowest bar here or the absence of bar means that I'm really reluctant to select uh, products priced at $2. Here, the fact that we have 22-23% uh, uh, here and zero regular means that I'm, I'd rather have a diet something than uh, a regular one. Uh, and over here, it means that I slightly prefer Pepsi to Coke uh, and I really dislike Sprite, which actually is very accurate, that these are my exact preferences. And so if you look at the importance of each attribute, uh, my, my preferences are driven for about 40% by brand, about 40% by price, especially the high prices that I, I try to avoid, uh, and then about 20% by um, regular or diet, which Actually, it's interesting. I thought it would have been higher, but apparently not. Now, of course, the point is not to have part worth about one individual. It's the process of getting part worth about hundreds of individuals who represent the marketplace and then using these things to predict market shares, 
uh, and uh, and run simulations and and so on and so forth. And that's where more advanced case studies um, happen uh, and are valuable. So here, for instance, we have the door. Uh, case study, which is a rare business-to-business -business case study using conjoint analysis uh, as segmentation to to explain and help a German company uh, get introduced into the the U.S. market, uh, and you have the kind of, of approaches they're thinking about. You have uh, optimal pricing that you can uh, take care of. Uh, you have uh, thermographic data about what kind of customers you're talking to. Uh, you have the competitors you're dealing with as well. Uh, so you can have market share predictions and so on. Uh, and it leads to a very complex and interesting case study that I absolutely love using in class. But uh, the, the important part is that by using a simple conjoint um, example in class, you can show how we got to these values over here in an actual study. Uh, but we did that in less than 10 minutes in the classroom. And usually it's very enlightening for students um, to do that. And it, it gets you to a great start talking about the more advanced options of conjoint analysis, uh, such as market share predictions and product optimization which are covered in, in most of the case studies we have about conjoint analysis as well as in the tutorial which explains all the other options available uh, to run simulations using that kind of data.